Hello, this is a nanophase short scientific talk intended to introduce scientists and other listeners to what we are doing in the nanophase project. Today we present a talk from our colleague Vincenz Pomar from the Letat Institute in Spain. Vincenz will explain how we are investigating the route of nanoparticles from production through their use to their releases into our environment. An understanding of these pathways is essential to model and predict the fate of these particles so we can understand where and in what form they will accumulate in our environment, be it in soil, in our rivers and seas, or the plants and animals that live in those habitats. I'll now hand over to Vincenz, who'll start his talk. Thank you. Hello, good morning. My name is Vicenç Pomar. I work in Leitat Technological Center in Barcelona. And I will present you an overview of the deliverable 1.2 that is a report on the pathway analysis. Well, let's start. Firstly, we will talk about the objectives. The objectives, the objectives are, first of all, to identify the release hotspots along the life cycle of each non-enabled product. Secondly, to evaluate the pathways followed by the different nanomaterials after release to end up in the different environmental compartments. And thirdly, to identify the gaps that nanophase could fill and plan the release study, studies to be, carried, to be carried out in World Package 4. In order to achieve that objectives, um, we have to, to analyze the case studies. Well, how are we going to do that? To analyze the case studies, we have designed different surveys that have already been sent to the different industrial partners. So Hempel, Innotex, Amepox, FCCCO, Applied Nanoparticles, and Promethean Particles. How these surveys are? Well, the design of the, several, of the surveys are the following. We get firstly some information about the, the, other, the information available from other projects of the different case studies. We also get some data on nanoparticle types and synthesis. For example, here in the right side of the screen, we can see uh, an example of a survey of applied nanoparticles, where they show some characterization of their nanoparticle with different techniques. We have also asked for market details, as well as for product incorporation. Now we see an example of FCCCO road photocatalytic coating. Uh, we can see here how they apply the product and also some market details. And then we also ask for information in the use phase, in the, in the recycling processes, and end of life. So we have a complete analysis of the life cycle of the different case studies. Well, what do we do with this? With this information, I also have to say that these surveys are, are already uploaded in the World Package 1 Dropbox folder. And well, what do we do with this information? We perform a life cycle diagram to, to try to assess where the hotspots of the release could be and how this nanomaterial could behave. This is a general life cycle, but we, we have performed a particular diagram for each case study. Here we have three examples. Let's start with the first one. Hempel with the antifouling paint for mine activities. Well, we, we have it divided in different phases. The first one would be the nanoparticle synthesis, in this case zinc oxide. In the synthesis we have we could have some release to the, envir the different environmental compartments as well as to the waste management. Uh, with a controlled release or residue, uh, well, to a residue synthesis from the residue synthesis. After the nanoparticle synthesis, we go to the these nanoparticles are incorporated into dispersion. In this case, would be the paint. And after that, there's a coating process 
of the paint to the watercraft or wherever. Then in the use phase, in this case the release will mainly end up in water due to the application. And we don't have recycling process. Regarding the end of life, it will also finish in the waste management facilities or in the different men release uh, in the different environmental com compartments, depending on how the watercraft are going to be treated in the end of life. Here we have the general life cycle again, and we go for the next example. In this case, if there is the FCCCO photocatalytic coding for ROPs. We here have again the nanoparticle synthesis, incorporation to dispersion, coating process, and here in the use phase, we'll mainly end up instead of in water, as in the last case, here in air and soil. About the recycling, the, the industrial partner informs us that around 10% of the, of the materials are recycled to the new asphalt, so it's something we should have into account because there could be some rests of the nanoparticles in the asphalt that will be recycled, so it will be again in use, so we should consider that also. Regarding the end of life, the asphalt that is not recycled will end up in the rinse deposit and from the deposit could go to the environment and also to a, um, to a waste management facilities. Okay, now let's start with the last example. It's from Innotex, where they work with textiles, they apply nanoparticles, different kinds of nanoparticles with textiles. Again, we have the nanoparticle synthesis, incorporation into dispersion, that dispersion or solution will be applied on the textiles, and in this case, during the use phase, the release will mainly end up in water also, but in this case due to household washings. Wait, sorry. Due to household washings. Uh, the recycling process, it depends, in principle, it depends on the textile and also on the companies, so we should get also a little bit more of information about about that part. And regarding the end of life, it will finish or in a landfill or in a incineration plan. Well. Um, now, if we think that we don't have enough information or more materials should be should be tested, we can incorporate like new new case studies to have a broader about the information. Uh, at the moment, currently, we have incorporated a new case study from Hempel. It's called Aerosil 200. It incorporates a silicon nanoparticle with average particle size from 12 to 14. And we have also tried to incorporate uh, case studies from other EU projects. In this case, we won't perform like all the study, we'll, we'll just to try to fill the gaps because there's already information, experimental part from these case studies, for example from non-solutions, uh, we, are, we are trying to fill the gaps from multi-world carbon nanotubes embedded in polymeric matrix for caram rest purposes, and also uh, eyeing uh, containing quantum daptalurides for well, photoluminescent properties. Also from the Sun European project, they, they want us to study their timber treatment with copper and well just say that if with all that case studies we incorporate and the ones we have we are not completely satisfied we could also look for another external companies where we will have a lot of a lot of possibilities to consider 